I've produced several magnetic loop videos, but if you only had time to watch one of them, this is one I'd recommend, because this is my best ever loop for pedestrian mobile. Magnetic loops often involve compromise, and when you have to carry the antenna, the compromises are even more severe. But I think this one offers one of the best trade-offs yet. It's 80 centimetres in diameter and is made of annealed copper tubing, 13 millimetres in diameter. Therefore, its resistance is lower than coax cable braid or extension flex. How did I decide the loop size? Well, there's two factors. First of all, the length of the copper tubing. It comes in 3 metre lengths. Secondly, the frequencies I want to cover. I want it to go up to 10 metres. And the largest circumference you can use for a magnetic loop is around a quarter wavelength. So, it had to be no longer than 2.5 metres circumference. I chose a little bit less than that, 2.4 metres. The loop can easily cover a 2 or 3 to 1 frequency range. So, with a modest size airspace tuning capacitor, I could cover four bands from 30 up to 10 metres, or around 9 to 30 megahertz. You'll notice it's a two-gang tuning capacitor. That was deliberate, because the two gangs are in series, and that reduces the losses. It also reduces the maximum capacitance you can go up to, which has implications if you want to operate on 40 metres, because the loop won't tune down far enough. So what I did to overcome that was I put on a small switch that shorts one of the gangs for 40 metres only. Now it is a compromise, the loop is a little bit small to be really efficient on 40 metres, and I've got a bit of extra loss because of the capacitor, but it's worthwhile because 10 and 40 metres are my favourite pedestrian mobile bands. Around the tuning capacitor in a bit more detail. I was lucky that I got a capacitor with an inbuilt vernier drive. It actually came from an old broadcast radio. Not all that common, but if you can get them, use them for this project, because the tuning is very sensitive. You'll notice the loop is all black. How did I do it? Irrigation tubing is very useful, and you can easily get a 20 metre length that slips easily over 13 millimetre copper tubing. It's a nice fit. The end of the tubing is just here, just under the gaffer tape, and from that I've got coax pigtails going to the tuning capacitor. Make them as short as possible. I used RG58, but strictly speaking, the thicker the better. So if you've got RG213 braid, then use that instead. The tuning capacitor is just mounted to the cross piece with a bit of scrap circuit board. Any material will do. These are the main materials. Half inch copper tubing, the stuff that can bend easily. Irrigation fittings. And wooden doweling. Now note that the wooden doweling can fit inside the tubing and also inside the irrigation fittings and it's a firm fit. There's also irrigation tubing. Again, you'll note this fits snugly over the copper tubing. The inner loop is made of RG213 coax both braid and centre conductor connected together and that goes to the RG58 feed line here. I could have used copper tubing and in fact if you had a 3 metre length and you cut 2.4 metres off for the antenna element you'd actually have enough to make the drive element. I'm using cable ties or gaffer tape to hold it all together. 